This this flag has got a very fascinating story. This is the first time this flag has been on display anywhere. And this flag belonged to this gentleman here, uh, Major John Cooper, and it was in his family. And Bob bought it from his one of his relatives. It was passed down within his family. And he was the adjutant for the New York 8th Heavy Artillery. And uh, <clears throat> this flag, uh, these are all bullet holes in the grape shot and canister. And it was in the Battle of Cold Harbor. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Battle of Cold Harbor. No, 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 no. But uh, this, and you don't, there's not a whole lot about that battle. It was kind of like ignored. You know, it was kind of like the forgotten battle. And only within like the last, uh, seems like 15, 20 years, there's been some discussion about it. Right, right. Um, but it's the one battle that uh, General Grant said he always regretted making was the last assault that Cold Harbor was ever made. Uh, and they lost about over 7,000 men in 20 minutes in this, in this uh, assault. And there was about 50,000 men that were engaged on the, on the Union side. And uh, Grant way underestimated uh, the, his enemy, uh, General Lee, and how many men he had and everything. Uh, this battle would be, is a lot of times they, they call it Grant's picket charge. And uh, it, if it would have been any other general, he would have probably been replaced. Right. But being Grant, you know, he wasn't. He wasn't. And, uh, but uh, he thought Lee was, he, he wrote a letter to uh, uh, the Secretary of War Stanton about a week before this battle, or a few days before, right. and said, I feel that the rebels are really beat. And uh, you know that just one big push, and it'll, it'll all be over with them. And he was, and uh, he gave his reason because they didn't come out and fight, you know, when they had opportunity to. Right, right. And uh, you know, but Lee was fighting a defensive war, you know. And during this battle, Lee had the most troops he had at any time during the soldiers' campaign. Lee was and, the general from the south, right? Right, right, right. right. And. Uh, but Lee had just gotten reinforcements. He had 23,000 troops, fresh troops that had been brought in from all around. Uh, he had the best defensive position out of any battle during that whole campaign. Uh, it was about eight miles from Richmond, so it was right on the capital, right on the border of the capital. So it was being well defended. And uh, they, uh, this regiment, the New York, the Eighth New York Heavy Artillery, took the heaviest casualties in that battle. And there's a description of this flag in the battle. And I'm going to, let me just read this to you here. He, uh, and uh, I'll just read the last part here. It describes the flag. It says, one after another went down beneath the storm of iron and lead, which swept the plain as the ranks thinned. They closed up sternly, and with arms at a trail and bayonets fixed, they pressed forward on a run without firing a shot. Down went the colors, the staff splintered and broken, as well as the hand that held it. Brave hands seized them again and bore them onward until the enemy's works were close at hand. Colonel Porter fell crying, close in on the colors, boys. Major Willett was wounded. A large number of line officers lay dead and dying. One-third of the rank and file lay hors de combat, disabled. The rebels were pouring in double charges of grape and canister at less than point blank range, sweeping away a score at every moment. The line, having lost its momentum, stopped from sheer exhaustion within a stone's throw of the enemy's works. Wow. And it, you know, it tells that the flat, the staff was broken, okay. and it's missing two stripes on the bottom. Those are probably still attached to the flag, uh, to the pole, to the flag pole. And. Uh, you know, and, and this consistent with the description in battle, the big holes are from the grape and canister, right. and the small holes are the bullets. Yeah. Wow. And uh, but to think that this flag had made it all the way to the to the breastworks of the enemy and was not captured, they brought it back. Now their colonel, Colonel Porter, was killed at the head of this flag, giving his last command was for the flag. You know, close in on the colors, boys, and then he was killed. Now. This man here, Leroy Williams, two days later, he uh, put together a company of men with four other men, and they went and recovered the body of Colonel Porter from the field. And he got their Congressional Medal of Honor for that. And the whole, all five of the men were awarded uh, these gold medals by the Century, which was a, like a monthly uh, magazine that was published in New York. 
and uh, they had, they awarded all five of these men this gold medal for that action that they did.